Hello everyone, it's me again. Sincere thanks for your time and also your strong support. For today, I'm going to embark on a new topic, which is anger modulation. In anger modulation, there is actually frequency modulation and also phase modulation. For this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of frequency modulation. This will be the part one series discussion on the anger modulation. So stay tuned in this channel to see more discussion on anger modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some encouragement by giving me comment and suggestion how I actually can improve my delivery. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start by discuss on anger modulation. As I mentioned on the previous slide, there are actually two types of anger modulation. Number one, frequency modulation, which is also denoted as FM. Another one is the phase modulation, which is also denoted as PM. In frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier signal change according to the modulating signal, which means for FM, the frequency of the carrier signal change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. On the next slide, I will give you more illustration on this. The peak amplitude EC of the carrier remain unchanged. For frequency modulation, the peak amplitude, which is the amplitude of the carrier signal, and also the phase, they remain unchanged. Only the frequency change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. The rest of the parameters like amplitude and phase remain unchanged. As for PM, phase modulation, okay, the phase angle of the carrier signal change according to the modulating signal. So for PM, the phase of the carrier signal actually change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. As for this case here, again, the peak amplitude or the amplitude of the carrier and also the frequency, they remain unchanged. Both FM and PM are collectively referred as angle modulation as the peak amplitude of the carrier signal is fixed, but the frequency or phase angle change respectively with the modulating signal. The figure below shows the effect of frequency modulation and phase modulation on a sinusoidal carrier. Okay, so the first part, part A here, which is the modulating signal. So from this diagram here, you can see that the modulating signal typically has a lower frequency. You can see over here, the modulating signal has a lower frequency. As for carrier, this is called unmodulated carrier because this carrier does not carry any information at this moment. You can see from here, the carrier has a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. So this is the key characteristics. Typically, carrier signal need to have a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. As we know that the carrier actually help to carry the modulating signal over the air to the recipient. Therefore, we need the carrier signal to be higher frequency, in fact, as much as possible to carry the modulating signal. This is our emphasis for today on frequency modulated signal. On the next video, I probably will discuss on the phase modulated signal. But for this particular video, I'm going to emphasize a little bit more on the frequency modulated signal. Let's take a look on the modulating signal. At this part here, you can see that it has the highest amplitude. Once this highest amplitude over here, you can see that it also has the 
highest frequency. As you can see from this diagram here, with high frequency, your period actually reduce. So typically for frequency modulated signal, when the modulating signal has the highest amplitude, it has the highest frequency. On the other side, you can see that this is the lowest point of the amplitude of the modulating signal. From here, you can also see that with a low modulating signal amplitude, you can see that the frequency also will be the lowest. When the frequency is the lowest, the period actually increase. From here, you can conclude that regardless what frequency, the peak amplitude remain unchanged. So therefore, you can see that the peak amplitude remain the same as from the carrier. You can see over here. You can see for this case here, for frequency modulated signal, the period is different. It actually depends on the frequency of the carrier change according to the modulating signal. So this is the first discussion on frequency modulated signal. In FM, the modulating signal is used to modulate the frequency of the carrier signal. The instantaneous frequency of the carrier change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. So this is what I have mentioned earlier on. So this is the modulating signal that fit into the frequency modulation diagram here. You can see that there are actually two input. One is the modulating signal. Another one is the carrier. Like I mentioned earlier on, typically the carrier actually has a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. If you take a close look on this diagram here, at the output will be the modulated signal. As for this case here, this is a frequency modulated signal. So therefore, over here, you can see that the frequency modulated carrier actually carry the information now. You can see that earlier on, this carrier does not carry any information. So after the frequency modulation, it convert into frequency modulated carrier, which means that they actually carry the information. Can you still remember when the modulating signal is has the highest amplitude, we will have the highest frequency. When the modulating signal amplitude is the lowest, you can see over here, we have the lowest frequency. And basically from here, we look at the frequency, we basically we plot back the modulating signal at the output. The equation of the unmodulated carrier is given by this equation here. So this is a typical sine or cosine waveform. So basically you can see that this carrier with without any information is governed by this equation here. You can see there are a few characteristics. This is basically the peak amplitude of the carrier. This is the frequency of the carrier. Equation for a single frequency modulating signal. Okay, so this is a signal that we want to send over to the recipient. Okay, so again, this is governed by this equation. Over here, you can see that this is EM, okay, which is the peak amplitude of the modulating signal. We also have the modulating frequency, which is the frequency of the modulating signal. So combine these two into one become a frequency modulated signal. So you can see over here. So this is the equation for a sinusonus FM modulated signal. Remember for frequency modulation, we are not going to change on the amplitude. We are only going to change on the frequency. So therefore over here, you can see that the frequency of the modulated signal change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. Can you see here? So this is the modulating signal. You can see that the modulating signal actually change the amplitude of the modulated signal. So from here, you can note that the peak amplitude of the FM modulated signal is still at EC, okay, which means that they still has the same amplitude of the carrier signal over here, you can see that for frequency modulation, the modulation index beta can be greater than one. Okay, so this beta here, they can be greater than one. I said this is because I just want to clarify for AM. Okay, we know that we cannot have more than one because once it's more than one, over modulation will occur. But for frequency modulation, 
this modulation index can be greater than one. The modulation index for FM is defined as the ratio of the peak frequency deviation to the modulating signal frequency and is denoted by beta or modulation index as illustrated here. So this is what it means. So this is the modulation index. Basically, this is the peak frequency deviation over the modulating frequency. In a FM modulator, the change in frequency is proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal as governed by this equation here. So let's do a very quick discussion. This is a modulating signal. Okay, so this is a FM modulated carrier. Okay, which means that this is a carrier with carry the information here. So let's take a look on some key parameters. For example, this is the lowest amplitude of the modulating signal. So remember what I mentioned earlier on, this actually has the lowest frequency. So you can see that in this diagram, this is Hertz. Basically, this is the point that indicates the lowest point of the modulating signal. On the other side, this point here, this has the highest amplitude in the modulating signal. So earlier on, I have mentioned when the amplitude is the highest at the modulating signal, it has the highest frequency as you can see from here. So you can see the illustrate here. Okay, when EMT is at the lowest amplitude, the modulated carrier has the lowest instantaneous frequency. On the other side, when EMT is at the highest amplitude, the modulated carrier has the highest instantaneous frequency. So from here, you can imagine here. So for example, when the waveform change from here to here, what actually happened? Can you imagine? They are actually at this lowest frequency. So when the amplitude start to rise, basically you can imagine the line shift to the right. Can you imagine? This arrow here shift a little bit to the right and they shift more and more until at this point, which is at the origin, which at the zero point, which means that basically they are at the carrier frequency. So basically this thing shift to the right over here when they actually reach this point. And basically the amplitude continue to rise. So therefore they continue to shift to the right. Can you see here? So basically finally they reach this point when they are at the peak of the amplitude of the modulating signal. Okay, imagine when this thing actually come down, you can imagine that this thing actually start to shift to the left. And then finally at this point here, they reach at the origin. And this thing continue to go down. So therefore, they continue to shift more to the left. Okay, so this roughly gives you some idea. Okay, on the next video, I will have further discussion on this frequency modulation. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your strong support.